In the last video, we learned what the product rule is, and we learned that when we used it, it matched the exact same way of taking the derivatives of the equations by multiplying things out first. But we also learned that we may not be able to use it in every example. So we're going to practice using the product rule in this video. Let's move to our second example. We want to find the derivative of f of x is equal to x squared plus 3 times x minus 7. I have the product rule listed in the top right corner, so I suggest that you pause the video and do both parts A and B on your own, and of course you know that the answer should match for both of those. So in part A, all we need to do is FOIL it out first. So our equation, notice I'm still using f of x here, is first x squared times x, which is x cubed, minus my outside of 7x squared, plus my inside of 3x minus 21. So I basically FOILed it, just flip-flopping my outside and my inside terms so they're in descending order. Now the derivative, f prime of x, is 3x squared minus 14x plus 3. Now, I skipped a lot of steps there, but hopefully with all of the practice that you got from the homework in the last section, you were able to follow that properly. If you need to write all of those steps on your own, please do so. So there is my derivative by multiplying it out first. Okay, now by using the product rule. So f prime of x, is the original of the second, x minus 7, times the derivative of the first, where I'm just writing it, but I'm not actually taking the derivative of it, plus the original of the first times the derivative of the second. And again, I'm writing that I need to take the derivative of it, but not actually taking the derivative. Okay, so now let me take those derivatives. Copy down my x minus 7. The derivative of this guy here is 2x plus x squared plus 3 times the derivative of this here, which is actually just 1. So simplifying this by distributing my 2x and kind of distributing my 1, but we don't need to because anything times 1 is itself. This gives me 2x squared minus 14x plus x squared plus 3. Combining like terms, 2x squared plus x squared gives me 3x squared minus 14x plus 3. And of course, that is the exact same answer that you got from part A, which means you have done it correctly. Again, the question of why am I doing it this way when this way is much shorter and the reason is because this way is not always going to work. It will in this section, but in further sections it won't. So I am forcing you to use the product rule, so when you have to use it, you know how it works. Okay, let's go ahead and look at a, another example. Find the derivative of g of x, again, by using the product rule, so I'm forcing you to do it. My equation is negative 15 times the square root of x plus 3 times x squared minus 2x. At first you might get in panic mode because you see two multiplications here. And you might be wondering, well, how do I do that rule when I have two multiplications? Because the formula listed over here is only has one, only explains when we have one multiplication. Now, there is a way to do it with two multiplications, but you actually do not need to use it in this example because this uses one of those other techniques. Let's go back and review it. This is a constant multiple rule. When I have a constant times something, I can just pull my constant out and then take the derivative of that thing here. So, yes, I do see two multiplications, but notice that one of them is just a constant. So what I can do is I can roll that constant out, and then I can take the derivative of the other piece all on its own. So I don't have to do a double multiplication rule here 
because this is, again, just a constant. All right, now on the inside, since I do have a multiplication between two functions, I will have to do my product rule. I don't know how to take the derivative of this square root of x, so I'm going to have to rewrite it. So I know that that can be rewritten as x to the 1 half power. And again, I still need to take the derivative of all of this. Now, I've done a big no-no here, and this is what students do quite often, so I should have caught up before, but I didn't. I am representing my derivative notation on my right-hand side, so I should also be representing my derivative notation on my left-hand side. I need to keep these notations consistent. Okay, now let me go ahead and apply this product rule. Now, typically I write it out, but I'm going to go ahead and try and skip that step here. So, it says the original of my second equation, which is x squared minus 2x, times the derivative of my first. So let me go ahead and actually derive it. Power rule, 1 half x to the negative 1 half power. And the derivative of 3, that's a constant, so that's just 0. Plus the original of my first equation times the derivative of my second equation. So the derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of minus 2x is just 2. So I have now taken the derivative by using my product rule. All I have to do is simplify them. So by that, I need to distribute this through here, and I need to FOIL this over here on the right. Don't lose this negative 15 with the brackets because that 15 goes through everything. That's my constant multiple rule. Okay, this is where most students make the most mistakes. It's not in the calculus part of this class. It's in the algebra part of this class. So here we go. 1 half x to the negative 1 half times x squared. So my coefficient stays out in front. What I do with my exponents is I add them. 2 minus 1 half is like 1 and 1 half, or an improper fraction that's in 3 halves format. Now when I distribute it through here, negative 2 times 1 half cancels to give me negative 1. Again, I add my exponents. This was originally x to the first power. So when I add that to negative 1 half, that gives me a positive 1 half. So this is like negative 1 x to the 1 half power. Then plus, now I have to FOIL it, 2x times x to the 1 half. I add my exponents. So I have a 1 exponent plus a 1 half exponent. 1 and 1 half, or 3 halves, outside is negative 2x to the 1 half, inside is positive 6x, and last is minus 6. And again, I have negative 15 times all of that. Okay, so all I have to do is add like terms. So I have 1 half x to the 3 halves plus 2x to the 3 halves. So I add my coefficients, 2 plus 1 half is 2 and 1 half, or writing it as an improper fraction, 5 halves, x to the 3 halves. Now my 1 half, a negative 1x to the 1 half minus 2x to the 1 half gives me a negative 3x to the 1 half, and then copying down the rest of it, 6x minus 6. So I've simplified the inside of my brackets, and now, if I choose to, I can distribute that negative 15. But if I distribute it, will it make my problem any easier, any more simplified? Typically, the answer is no, and that's the case in this situation. So I don't need to distribute it because it will not make my problem any more simplified. It will not make it any prettier, per se. So we have our final answer here, g prime of x. Now, if you choose to distribute it, that's perfectly fine. That will not hurt anything. And if you choose to rewrite it, so we know that we can rewrite this 3 half power and this 1 half power into square roots. If you choose to do that, that is okay as well. Since it purely just asks find the derivative, then I'm going to leave this as my final answer. 
Let's go ahead and do one more example. We have to find the derivative of f of t, which is equal to 2t minus 5 quantity squared, by again using the product rule. So I'm forcing you to use this rule so you understand how it works. Now, the problem with it in this problem is it doesn't look like a product. But we can make it look like a product. We know 2t minus 5 quantity squared is the exact same thing as 2t minus 5 times 2t minus 5, where it is multiplication. And in fact, we have to do so. That's the only way we know how to do it at this time. This is another rule that we have yet to learn. We'll learn that in the next couple of sections. So we need to take the derivative of this by doing the product rule. I encourage you to pause the video and see what answer you come up with. Okay, so my derivative here is the original of the second times the derivative of my first, which is just 2, plus the original of my first times the derivative of my second, which is 2. Now, this problem is really forgiving since our first function and our second function are exactly the same. So to simplify this, let me distribute my 2s through. That gives me 4t minus 10 in both places. So combining that, that gives me 8t minus 20. So we have taken the derivative of this example here. Now, you can choose to simplify this by factoring out a common factor, or you can just leave it as is. So here is the derivative of this guy. And now we've seen quite a few examples of taking the derivative by using the product rule.